All right, hello again, everybody, and welcome to another Tuesday night Sound Goblin <laughs> stream. Uh, so as you can see tonight, we're going to be doing Sekiro: Shadows Die Twice, the newest game from From Software. Uh, despite what the title may lead you to believe, this is not really a Dark Souls like game. It's vaguely well, less title, more it was made by From Software, but. I mean, the Which title is, of our stream. Oh, the title of our stream. Yeah. yeah. What did you title our stream? It's like Dark Souls, but stabbed to death by a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Tenchu, actually. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty much like... It's more Tenchu than it is Dark Souls. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I am, as always, Bog Rider Josh. I'm Shiv, or a ninja. I am Krampus, a wandering ninja. And I am Vincent. I have just worked almost 11 hours. Fuck nature, fuck the planet. I'm going to go to the zoo and kill a panther. Are you a ninja? I'm not actually going to go to the zoo and kill a panther. Please do not call the police. Better hurry, they're taking him away. Hmm. <laughs> but are you a ninja? No. Oh. <laughs> just as well, you didn't introduce yourself. Uh, just keeping an eye out here. We did have some frame dropping during the uh, lead in there, so I'm going to be keeping an eye on that. We uh, may have to take a brief break at some time to try a different ingest server or possibly reset the router just to see what's going on if we start seeing a lot more frame drop. But yeah, for now. Dude's fighting. Dude's fighting. It's certainly period accurate. It's, uh, well, period accurate from the costumes, at least. Let's stab. I have a rich man with plenty of land, so of course I'm going to fight this guy one on one in fair fight. <laughs> and not use it. My peasant army. <laughs> I mean, yeah, your peasant, peasant army was probably wiped out by his peasant army, so... Yeah. At this point, yes, it does look like they're both fighting over basically fucking nothing. <laughs> Bunch of dead peasants. <laughs> yeah. And how much peasant meat goes for? I have these fields of grain and no one to work them. This was not the best of ideas. We get Actually, fields of rice, but yeah. Rice is a grain. Yeah, true, Fields but... of grain is accurate. It is, but... Mm -hmm. Be more specific. People might think I'm actually talking about weed for some reason. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. <laughs> no, that guy makes you bleed your own blood. Yeah, so in case you were wondering what the intro song was about there, yeah, the character is just referred to as the wolf. Yeah. Yes. Doesn't have an actual name. Trained as a young shinobi. Cut to center and conquer. <laughs> <laughs> I forget, this. is this on PC? Yes. Techno? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Well, that might eventually be a mod. Mmm. Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> be perfectly frank, the modding scene for From Software games in general on the PC is not huge because From Software games are coded in fucking gibberish. Uh, they are, though they have started to actually do some impressive things with Dark Souls. Yeah, but they but just, yeah. they, they, they are not by any means easy to mod. No. This doesn't help the fact that pretty much everything that From Software came out with before, like, Dark Souls, or before Bloodborne and Dark Souls 3 was basically, uh, a bunch of crisis jobs shoved together. Yes. <laughs> so... It's a lovely snowy forest. Yep. Well, it's not really a forest. We'll get to that in a second. It's a mountain forest thing. Mesamete Kudasai. Anatam. 
It's a letter. Yep. Then I can escape from my offline tower base with them. Don't get caught. Yep. Stealth! <laughs> okay. uh, one of the things this game actually has that pretty much all the other ones didn't have. Well, a dedicated jump button? Full character or full controller mapping? Uh, no, three had full controller mapping. Did it? Yeah. yeah. I realize after being three, that would be would have been a much better idea to move where the run button was, but that's not entirely. Also, technically speaking, from here, you can turn around and swim through a little area. There's nothing actually yeah, there, but you, it does you, exist. You can, in fact, go over here and swim through a little area, uh, which basically shows you a little more than... You're, you're at the bottom of a well. Yeah, well, yeah. there's stuff up there, but you can't get there. I mean, so we can't actually dive. No. Well, Not in here right now, I don't think. Yeah. Well, this water doesn't cause you to be sick. Nope. I could jump. I could jump off walls. But only once. Ah. Singular wall jump. Can't yeah. jump yep. I assume you can't jump between the walls. Uh no. No. You have a single wall jump. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Still it's a lot more of a vertical than uh Yes. Yeah. Well again, I mean it's not Yeah. I know. Okay. You can also technically run back here. Which is the top of that's that where they little section? Down. Can, yeah, yeah. That's it. This is there fall damage? I think so. Maybe. It's not really a significant thing because, in general, if you fall from a significant height anywhere, there's usually a grappling hook point somewhere nearby that you can save yourself on. Let's see hog walls. Get to the edge of your peak. Um, great stealthy art of crouching in bushes. Yeah. No, no one will certainly see you. My red coat is invisible on these green plants. <laughs> Thin Look, green foliage. Listen, bright orange is a very traditional ninja color. Uh huh. These guys are talking about how I'm cowardly shit. Left me in a well. Did that guy saw me or did he? Yeah, he did. Yeah. He went red. Yeah, that's fine. Eavesdropping people. Secret ninja technique of eavesdropping. Usually by being one of their present servants. <laughs> I'm not a present servant. I am, in fact, Ninja Slayer! Yeah. You can. <laughs> <laughs> if only. <laughs> uh, you can let hang on. These clearly marked ledges. <laughs> <laughs> My hands are covered in bird shit. <laughs> yeah, bird shit and bird script. 
<laughs> so you can only hang on ledges that have covered in bird shit. Yeah, ancient techniques are gross. <laughs> I'm not sure why this is convention, but uh... I eat with this hat. What to have clear demarcation of what things you can actually interact with? Uh, specifically, just the white, uh, white ledges. I mean, I, I completely get it and why. It's, it's supposed it's, to be like wear and tear. It just, it's yeah. something that stands like out. Corrosion. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Like modern games use tarps and that's fine. But yeah. But the ledges are fine. Technically, you can actually get up by wall jumping up into the front of this building, but you can't actually get in it anyway, besides that yes. hole in the wall. Mm. The door is locked from the other side. Which is really confusing because if you're trying to lock someone in a keep, you figure you lock it from the outside, not the inside. But hey, what do I know? Yeah. Where do you lock it from both sides? Oh, you have to open both sides to get through this door. Now he gives us our sword, which unlike Dark Souls games, uh, this is the only weapon you got. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, primary weapon. Yeah. You get different. Uh, you get different secondary ninja stuff, tools that get loaded into the Shinobi <laughs> prosthetic. We'll get to that. Yeah. That'll happen shortly. But yeah, you get a sword. This is the sword you have for the entire game. Learn the sword, learn it well, for it is your friend. Your lover, your landlord. Occasionally your tech support. Kasumi Maru. Unfortunately, it speaks in a funny accent. It's a little racist. The traditional shinobi uh, tradition of breaking everything we see. There could be secrets. And there actually is a uh, a pellet, which is a slow health regeneration item that heals basically nothing. Yeah. Eh, you don't need health. Just don't get hit. Yeah, we'll see about that. He also gives you your not Estus flask. It's a gourd. Yeah, it's a healing gourd. Healing waters. The gourd of lilies. Comes back every time you rest of Buddha statues. You know, if it's not broke. <laughs> Look, Buddha provides. He gives you an umbrella, he gives you water. Do you remember that night you possibly got your shit kicked out of you? No, we don't talk about that. Okay. <laughs> I forgot. Look, not to be too stereotypical, but I got my ass kicked so hard my ancestors felt it. Not yet. Give it time. I still have two arms. Also, you are a wasted orphan on a battlefield. You don't know your ancestors. <laughs> Basic kid was like, "Here's your sword. Here's a gourd. Uh, there's a secret passage under the boat we can take to get the hell out of here." Uh, your gourd currently has one drink. Correct. Yep. Uh, certain enemies will drop gourd seeds, and you can use those to increase the size of your gourd. So here's the basic of combat. You have an attack. Uh, if you break someone's posture, you don't have vitality like you do in the Dark Souls games. You have posture. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if your posture gets broken, you can do death blows. This works both ways. Yes. This man also doesn't see me. So so still However, importantly, unlike the Dark Souls games, this game just lets you fucking see the bar on screen to let you know how much they have. That little orange bar that popped up underneath the health posture. bar is was his posture bar. Uh, when your posture bar is building up, one appears for you, and with boss characters, is a much larger, much more visible one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Boss characters will also tend to have multiple death blows it takes to kill them. Yes. And unlike 
mooks, it typically takes more than a single good parry to actually fill up the posture bar. Oh, well, that's big. So two days ago, I played seven hours of Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> <laughs> what controls do you think are in my head right now? Well, and also, I wasn't actually paying attention. Did you actually drink from your healing gourd, or did you just... Nope. Yeah. But again, I jumped rather than attacking. Yeah. Oh, but now he has full health and a healing gourd. Victor. Gotta walk it. There we go. Uh, timing parries is also very important. You only yeah. get the guaranteed death blow if you basically perfectly time it. Uh -huh. uh, if you don't perfectly time it, you will block and you will. You'll take posture. Yeah, you'll take some posture, but. Still somewhat effective, and you can usually follow up with attacks that will significantly increase their posture damage, but will not necessarily put them instantly in death blow mode. I'm telling you, you can walk on. Technically, they expect you to go straight to that gate, but you don't technically have to, because this man needs to die. Of somewhat important note, there's actually very little reason to go around killing everybody in this prologue, but... Yeah, like I can technically completely avoid these guys. Because at this point, you are not actually gaining, effectively, experience. So I was, I'm assuming you were trying to fall down and kill and do a death blow after. Yes. Yeah, there are death from above death blows. As long as they're unaware of you. <laughs> During this tutorial, it will frequently throw up these menus to interrupt your ability to actually play the game. Yep. Yes, it will. Oh. Long sword Jim over there. I can see this being useful the first time through and then annoying every other time. Hmm? Just the uh, tutorial messages. Oh, they don't show back up. Yeah. Okay. They will only show up once. So now when he gets back to the desert, it won't pop up again saying, like, hey, you can use your quick items, or hey, here's how you do counter slashes. It, it acknowledges that you already saw those. Most trash mooks like this, uh, two or three hits that they block is also enough to break their posture bar, so you don't necessarily have to go for the perfect parries. Yeah. You mean the Sengoku era equivalent of the middle aged office worker? Yeah. With a sword? Pretty much. Uh, the the mid boss and boss characters are much but more important to actually get timing on your parries and such, because they will regen their posture a lot faster than these guys will. Yeah. So the only way to actually make significant build-up on them is to get those good-timed parries. Yeah, like there's a boss right here. Right mid-boss guy. Yeah. There's the leader of Shigenori Yamauchi. Also an important thing about the leader type characters, I don't think this guy actually does it just because he's pretty simplistic, um, but a lot of the sort of mid-boss characters uh, effectively have three different types of attacks they can throw, and you have three different ways of dealing with them. Yes, this you guy do not, in fact, parry everything. Yeah, this, this guy, this guy I think only any... does the overhead, or the, the, the parryable stuff. But in general, it'll come up, I think, when the, with the first 
general you face. But uh, they will have the attacks like the, these ones, which can be parried. They will have sweeps, which you have to jump over. And they will have other, another type of attack that has to be backstepped away from. to heal, but they don't really do a lot of healing. They're also not instant healing, so... Yeah, yeah. their heal over time effect. So they're similar to, though less effective than the magic pebbles from like 2 and 3. Uh, Dark Souls 2 and 3, I should say. Uh, 2, mainly. Okay. Where you have the, um... Oh, I forget those items. I didn't do it. Out of, I didn't use them out of principle. That also doesn't really help that much. Though. Yeah, no, that's again the point here is that pellets technically will heal a little bit. Oh no, they help for normal people who actually increase their health. There's, for how I play Dark Souls games, that doesn't really. <laughs> I think. Hmm? I'm trying to remember if there's an item over here or not. I don't think so. Is. I don't think it's a very important one. Okay, now there was something over here. There's stuff across the way, though. Yeah. Apologies, because I'm sure that's picking up on Mike. For some fucking reason, the helicopter flies through this area every fucking night for the past, like, month. By the way, there are yokai in this game. All about goblin problems. I'm gonna take care of this for you. I will charge you later. That guy. Hey, did you hear something? Yeah, it sounded like a yokai getting killed. That was just the wind. <laughs> do, 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 do. It may indeed be a demon. That is also the wind. Hundreds of years later, all oh, the perfect genome for my troopers. And you hear snake coming down, it's probably just the wind. <laughs> uh, you can actually just drop right down, too. Yep. Blow the reed whistle. It's out the feasting home. Then this kid gets here, no questions asked. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, he's small, therefore very stealthy. Hey, did you just see that kid running by here? That's just the wind. <laughs> <laughs> he's making woo sounds he went by. Clearly it's just the wind. It's one of the theoretical abilities of the divine air. It's just turned invisible at will. <laughs> I think it's like the theoretical abilities of the dark Gundam. <laughs> he has a faded bloodline. They want to drink his blood to get powers. Don't ask questions. I don't know if that's actually the case, but I'm assuming given Bloodborne. Is People it pale want to drink blood? blood? He has pale blood. <laughs> uh, he is, in fact, the divine heir. Whatever the fuck that means. He's from so, the dragon lineage. So if you're going for the um, From Software Unified Game Theory, <laughs> there's a good connection point at least. Yep. Something that is rejected by both sane people. Yep. Now get ready to get our shit pushed in. Hey, it's technically possible to win this fight and then lose in the cutscene anyways. I'm not gonna. <laughs> Tell you straight up. No, no, I got this. 
There you go. He did not. Your have sword this. is just a piece of wood. <laughs> Okay, I've got like 90 more swords and a scroll. Wait. Oh shit, we're gonna have to go back to that well. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, fight with the boss. Keep fight, fight is a strong keep, word. Keep in mind, he's an archer. So he's just styling on me when he beats the shit out of me in the sword. Yeah. have to perfect parry like 15 attacks to get one of his health bars. Yeah. Didn't do that arm anyways. It's holding me back. <laughs> yep, didn't need that. I'm just gonna Last die now. Arm. Yep. Now I can't choose to actually be or to have my right arm cut off instead. <laughs> <laughs> Which arm would you like to have cut off? <laughs> Got seen. Sorry, main character's not a freak. <laughs> I know what I said. He knows what he said. He said what he meant. Look, what would you call an aberration that only appears in roughly ten percent of the population? Mutant powers. Sounds like a freak to me. <laughs> Wait, we get mutant powers? Fuck, I got chips. <laughs> yeah, you get the mutant power to not use scissors. <laughs> it's all to use scissors. Use scissors. It's not actually fucking hard. Scissors aren't hand specific. <laughs> you, you say that. <laughs> there are left handed scissors. They kind of are, but if you're left handed and have to adapt to someone uh, to a world that's completely right handed, you, you learn to adjust. You fucking anyways. But they are absolutely actually designed for right handed people. Yeah. How? Some, the contours of the, the actual grip, contours right? yeah, of the, the grips. Of the grip. If you have a contoured grip one, there's some that are just two rings. Yeah, yeah. some of them are. So don't give so a shit if what if you're a caveman. <laughs> all scissors are ambidextrous. Yes. You enjoy yes, there are ambidextrous scissors as well, but there is a good portion of them that are actually meant for right handers. Hell yeah, bone tech. Hell yeah. How the fuck does this? Wait, yo, guy, never mind magic. Got it. Ninja yeah, look, if you're, <laughs> you're going to be sitting here throughout this entire game trying to ask questions every time something unrealistic shows up, just leave now. You're going to wear your voice out. <laughs> is anyone going to say it? This is this is my boning hand. <laughs> it's not made of, it may be made of bone. It's not clear. It's bone or wood or something. My major disappointment is, honestly, his arm looks cooler before he gets the, the feudal Japan... The cyborg, yeah, yeah. cybernetic arm. <laughs> it's the old venom snake prototype. Oh well, sure. Yeah, it's not entirely clear what it's actually made yeah. out of. I imagine it's probably some sort of stone, considering it was made by the sculptor who makes the Buddha statues. Yeah, I mean, it, it's made from Norman. Might be bone as well, I would suppose. I don't bone, know. Could be wood. It could be who knows. Look, if we can get ancient shinobi cybernetics, I'm sure that Metal Gear Solid is perfectly fine having 80s technology more advanced than what we have today. <laughs> yeah, we have this guy. He's a uh, he's a sculptor, not the sculptor. Yes. He's more confusing. His Buddha statues look nothing like the ones that the sculptor made. It's true. You could have. Yeah, I assume the hand works via Buddhist magic. Yeah, just yeah, just accept it. Move on. <laughs> the hand works. I just <laughs> I just want a Buddha know. beam arm cannon now. <laughs> <laughs> the hand working is the least of the concerns this thing has. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably the most believable part. Go, my shinobi buster. <laughs> I mean, the grappling hook in the hand has equal issues for other reasons. And the flamethrower, and yeah. the ninja the star shuriken launcher, launcher and, <laughs> and the giant axe. 
<laughs> yeah, literally every other ninja tool you could ever possibly think of, plus Something the things you absolutely do not associate with ninjas, just ends up somehow shoved into this thing. Uh-huh. So, it has its own hammer space. Got it. Basically. Basically. Yes, because no matter how many tools you add to it, the actual look of the thing never changes. Yeah. Go, go, gadget axe. Yeah. The Shinobi prosthetic. <laughs> it's great for being a Shinobi. Can't carve boot us. So what you're saying is he's uh, feudal Japan's uh, Inspector Gadget. Inspector Wolf. And that little boy is this penny. I guess. <laughs> or the wind. <laughs> yeah, so he's like, if you find Shinobi tools, I'll totally jam them in your Shinobi prosthetic. Don't ask how it works. I'll find a way. It's already, it's already a functional arm. I already appreciate its fucking worth. <laughs> Didn't I only lose half much. my arm? Oh, I cut the whole thing off. Leave. And I cast by the dragon arrow. I was like, oh, well. Magic blood. <laughs> I heard something about vaping. I decided not to ask. All I heard was, do, 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 420. <laughs> Nobody blazes like a dragon. You think that's smoke coming out of there? <laughs> Some sort of mist. It's high all the time. Alright, gather the dragon bongs. <laughs> the seven dragon bongs. Oh I don't give a shit what Congress says. Legalize weed, dude! <laughs> <laughs> Other people have shown up to this temple. There's one off to the right. He also has issues. <laughs> you can, by the way, totally ignore that commentary and fuck off to other parts. Well, yeah, you never have to go talk to a uh, Hanbai. Yeah, here's a... This is a Buddha statue made by the actual sculptor. Yeah. And he's like, that one's not one of mine, because it's not horrifying. It's not a screaming Buddha. Mine don't have the ability to drag you into memories. Yep, that's true. We'll get to that soon. Buddha statues really neat. It is made of orphan meat. Confirms that. Ah, uh, don't worry about it. You'll figure it out later. Oh, also this game totally has a cosmetic system whereby the more people you kill, the more covered in blood you get, but that clears off every time you rest in a Buddha statue. This doesn't do anything. Now we're actually the cosmetic system in Bloodborne. No, no. Uh, cosmetic system in Bloodborne was close. It was also close. I assume. Yeah. No efforts, I assume. Considering you're playing an actual character. I don't think so. Yeah, as far as I know, you yeah. wear the yeah. proto Naruto coat here the entire game. That coin purse. Uh, here's one of the actual. Uh, bonfire equivalents. At least it's not completely awful from a disguise standpoint. It's not fucking um, obnoxiously bright. No, it's just like a dark red goat. Yeah. yeah so these are sculptor's idols. Uh, this would be the equivalent of bonfire. It is mostly a checkpoint. You also come here to turn in stuff to increase your stats, except you, rather than having levels, you basically just have, for every four prayer beads, certainly not pieces of heart, you increase your health. Yes. Uh, and uh, also your yeah. you, posture. You rest, it refreshes your gore and all that kind of stuff. It responds yeah. all enemies. Uh, unseen aid is a thing. Basically, when you die, you lose half your money and half your uh, experience. Uh -huh. uh, there's a chance, the unseen aid chance, that you don't actually lose stuff. Ah. Uh, the more you die, people can get afflicted with a sickness called uh, dragon, rot. Just dragon rot. And uh, it decreases it your unseen decreases aid your chance. Unseen aid chance. So there's a couple of paths off of here. Uh, this one just amuses me. There's nothing we can do here yet, but <laughs> it is very clearly the ninja style yeah. uh, flipping wall uh, door. But it does not work right now. It's locked from this way. The first time I ran down there, I was like, I like that. Yes, it is significant. Rather than a standard open prompt, you in fact do have to do the hug, hug wall, wall thing to try and open that door. It is a cute touch. And here's this gentleman. There's technically two things up here. There's this guy. Who's got issues. Fine. F 
fuck you then. He's fine. Thank you! Yeah. Next. <laughs> uh, He's a living training dummy. Yep. Yep. Or unliving as training dummy. Uh, I'm just going to skip this talking. Strictly speaking, I'd say he's about as alive as you are. Yeah. He gets up quicker. Mm -hmm. Basically, he can't die. Uh, he wants to die, but he can't. Mm -hmm. So he decided to just become a training dummy for me. Mm -hmm. And so you can like, train how to attack, train how to deflect, step dodge. Uh, as you gain new abilities, mm -hmm. he'll get new training things for those particular abilities to teach you how to use them. Okay. Uh, the other thing that's over here... The shrine? The offering, the offering box. box. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, if you lose access to items or things that are just unavailable... Uh, they'll pop up here. Ah. And you can spend money to buy them. Yeah, it's a decent way to avoid the issues that sometimes occur wherein you might no longer have access to an area or a particular NPC and no longer be able to get stuff. And now you just go to the offering box. We have a grappling hook. Yeah. It does grappling hook things. There's very clear grappling hook like indicators. Yeah. Circles. Circles everywhere. Uh, also, they don't really try to hide Buddhas in this game at all. They're all they're, pretty obvious. They're all pretty obvious, and there's a lot of them very close together at the start. Yeah. And yeah, as soon as you get to the second one, you unlock fast travel between all of yeah. them immediately, which is nice. Yes. So, like, that was two jumps to that Buddha, or to get to this one. Um, and there's another one, like, around the corner. There's another one literally around the corner. Uh, Best trouble is nice, in spite of what some people might like, think. <sighs> Look, I try not to actually listen to Souls players. It's not all of them, but the ones that do, it's just... Uh... Let's see, there's a guy over there. Yeah, it's not just Souls <laughs> players, there are other... Game players who just hate fast travel, like I've, I've heard people who play Skyrim hate fast travel. Uh, I'm still trying to square that one. Terrible blocking right now, apparently. Uh, yeah. Well, you're not dead. Now you are. All right. Theoretically. Maybe I should have replaced your entire body with prosthetic. I think this time it actually kills you. Oh yeah, you didn't have one yet. Oh no, you have to get the cutscene. Yeah, you have to get the cutscene. So basically, uh, getting killed the first time doesn't actually kill you. You have uh, the ability to resurrect. Yes, yeah, so you have the ability to resurrect. So you can either die or you can resurrect. So if you die, you just respawn? And... Uh, if you die, you... The poll thing that uh, he was saying earlier about you lose like half your money and stuff. Only yeah. happens if you die, die. Only happens if you die, die. Mm -hmm. Resurrection prevents that. Okay. Yeah. Also, the ancient ninja technique of money vacuum. Yep. Uh, you put it on L1. Yep. Yeah, there we go. So um, when people die, they'll drop money. Uh, you have to money vacuum it. Got it. This works from an insanely long distance away, actually. Like, several meters. <laughs> yeah, you got a shit ton of rare earth magnets in your shinobi prosthetic. I mean, it's actually honestly just kind of useful for when you're facing multiple enemies, so you can, like, once you actually take them down, you can actually not have to worry about running back over to the bodies of the first ones you dealt yeah. with. You just hold it down. It, it and has a draw pretty large them. radius on doing the draw to it. Uh, uh, so rare an earth magnet that works on non-ferrous metals? Yes. <laughs> so, underneath my, uh, or right above my health bar, the bottom left, mm -hmm. there's that red circle. Uh, that's the resurrections. Uh-huh. So every time you rest, that one that's full right now comes back. 
Uh, as you fight, you can basically refill the other one ah. to have up to two. Okay. Uh, you might be able to get more than two, but... Uh, it is also important to note that you cannot resurrect twice in a row. Uh, if you are fighting like a, like a boss-type enemy and you get killed, you resurrect and come back, you have to kill at least one enemy before you can resurrect again. Mm. Uh, there's an item up next to the wall to your right. Pretty sure it's a pellet. Uh, I think oh. it's a... Or no, one That's of a sugar. Sure. These are the temp stat boosts, yeah, basically. Like that temporarily yeah. reduces damage taken. There's also a different type that will temporarily re- uh, increase attack power. Stuff like that. They are about as useful as you expect them to be. So incredibly useful to a speedrunner and completely worthless to everyone else. Essentially. Dead. So the question is, they've, they've given you a lot of tools for stealth. How viable is a mostly stealth run? I mean, There are certain parts stealth. of the game that are just not stealthable, stealthable. Okay. but the majority of the exploration area game of the game is intended to be done in stealth. Okay. You are a fucking ninja. Like, it's part of why the very common sentiment about this game is this is more of a Tenchu game than it is a Souls game. I have no problems with that. They're really good people. If I'm being totally honest, most of my problems with this game actually stem from the things it does keep from the Souls-style games, rather than the stuff that's from Tenchu. Like a money magnet? No, like the penalty for dying, other than just resetting you your progress. Mm. Oh. Slipped off the wall. Uh, it is important to note, by the way, that, as you may have assumed, but just in case you didn't, it is possible to cure Dragon Rot from people. Uh, yeah, there's items uh, you'll get later on that can do Dragon Rot curing. However, because it quite literally cures everybody's Dragon Rot, you're actually almost better off just waiting until every possible NPC is Dragon Rotted before using it. Mm. So it's kind of a weird... Yeah. I'm pretty sure that was not their intent, but it ends up working that way. Because while they do exist, the Dragon Rock Cures are not super common. So you don't really want to waste them. Yeah, you don't want to waste them, and in order not to waste them, you essentially want to get the most use out of them, which effectively means get the most possible NPCs rotted with Dragon Rock before using them. Totally slip there, that's fine. Uh, one of the other things that's a little... I understand why it is the way it is, but it's kind of a little annoying, again, coming from the perspective of like wanting more of a Tenchu game than a Souls game, uh, is with the more resilient enemies, the boss types that typically take more than one death blow to take out, uh, pretty much as soon as you engage in combat with them, there's effectively no way to ever actually return to stealth other than going so far out of their distance that they also heal up. That works. Like, pretty much once you have aggroed any enemy of significance, they are aggro, and there is no way to lose that aggro without losing any progress on actually defeating them. You, you can go yeah, you can go pretty far out to get rid of uh, aggro, but... But going that far out also gives them the chance to heal yeah. any damage you've done to them. So it's kind of a... I mean, again, it is sort of nice that it is actually an option if you are getting your ass kicked, just run. Just to leave? Yeah. yeah. Like, for instance, there's another mini-boss up here um, who showcased one of the nice things. He's one of the mini-bosses who's one of the enemies that actually has two, uh, two death blows to kill. Mm-hmm. You can absolutely stealth one of those death blows off. Yeah. If you, if you sneak up on him, you can take one out immediately and only have to fight effectively do the posture mechanicing once. Yeah. 
Oh, lucky dog. Yes. Yeah, there are in fact dogs. There's more dogs too, so I don't know where the hell the rest of them went. Yeah, it's like, there's another Buddha right there. Yeah, that's not even there. solid. Dogs also have a death blow off of just regular blocks, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Which is... Yeah. Dead. Shave dog. Okay, so oh, throw that up here. We're not going to take that quite yet. I actually want to go in here first. This is our first uh, prosthetic. Oh. This is uh, shuriken wheel. It lets us throw shurikens. Well, that's pretty straightforward. I see. So the. I'm going to use this to actually travel back. Yeah. Travel uh, to important places. Left it. Palace or temple. Ah, important places. I like that. Yeah. Uh, so it is important to note uh, using the rest or travel commands at these idols enemies. will respawn enemies. There are other things in the menu that don't. So just sitting down at the idol doesn't actually automatically respawn everything. Correct. It is specifically using the rest or travel options, which does. I think, and, uh, yeah, okay, so she's yeah. up now. Even though she doesn't do anything yet. Yeah, she is the person we turn gourd seeds into in order to... Yeah, well, uh, if we turn gourd seeds in, she will basically improve our, uh, our healing gourd. Yeah. Um, she's the apprentice of my doctor, who gets referenced multiple times throughout the game. Dr. Zeus, Dr. Zeus. She's also technically researching Dragon Rot. You can set the healing gourd. She's like, oh yeah, I made it. it. Just automatically spawns water as long as you rest. Bring me seeds, we can make it better. Uh, he has tools. So we can actually get to game plan. I'm just going to start skipping through. Uh... Yeah. The dialogue in this is just about as important as it is in any Dark Souls game. It's how you figure out the story, basically. Yeah. So interesting, but not that important. Yeah, so we can create loaded shuriken. Uh, Which is you throw just shuriken. throwing shuriken. Yeah. That's supposed to be unloaded shuriken. Don't worry, these are not dangerous. I haven't loaded these shuriken. All right, these prosthetics are pretty interesting. Oh my eye! <laughs> yeah. So once we get more tools, we can switch between them. Yeah. So basically, you can have three equipped at a time. You can get more than three, but you only have three equipped at a time. Uh huh. Uh, you can switch through them. Uh, the other thing is so right on the little right, uh, similar to bullets and bloodborne, for mm -hmm. guns. Yeah. Uh, all your uh, prosthetic tools. Use up spirit to or spirit emblems to use. Mm -hmm. Some places will just have spirit emblems on the ground. You pick them up. Otherwise, you usually get them from killing enemies. So you can't just exclusively spam yeah. stuff. You can also just buy them at the uh, idols. They cost like ten. Yeah. So if you really want to buy some, you can do that too. Uh, the other thing that's nice about this game is that it just automatically has essentially a inherent storage box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So technically, you can only right now can only hold. 15 spirit emblems total. If you get more than that, they will just be in backup, basically. Yeah. Uh, and when you go to a... Uh, and the next time you go to a... It'll automatically, food, refill, it'll automatically refill your stock. The wall. Definitely. Okay, so, so over yeah, there... One of the other very nice things about this game, all told, a lot of people, again, approach this from the perspective of, like, a Souls-like game. And it's really not, because this game actually wants you to, like, enjoy it. I enjoy Souls-likes, but... So that guy there is a mid-boss. Yeah. So he has two death blows. Yes, he is also the first guy who will start doing perilous attacks. Yeah, so you've got thrusts, which you can deflect. 
sweeps, which you can jump, and grabs, which you have yeah, to step dodge. dodge. That's sweet. Yeah. So how do you tell the difference? It's literally the they have different wind ups for the attacks. Okay, so it's like a jump is pretty obvious. The sweep, he'll put it back to his side. The thrust, he kind of pulls it straight back. And then the uh, grab is its own thing. You'll see it. Oh, theoretically. That's that thing. Do his posture getting thing back. Yeah, that's the other thing too. Is most bosses have a little like move they can do to restore some of their posture. Also, it just naturally yeah. restores over time. Now I'm dead. And they do also, as you may have noticed, have a little kick move, so you can't just stand there holding guard in front of them. Yeah. Yeah. You die, you lose stuff. Uh, so the other thing it meant brought up there, which I hadn't really touched upon because we haven't earned one yet, is skill points. That is what you get from defeating enemies is experience towards skill points. Skill points are sort of as close as this game really comes to having any sort of leveling mechanic. back with his hand. And then yeah, a lot of the bosses will also have a move like that where they start charging up for like a power move. You can either get out of the way or you can just fucking stab them while they're doing that and it'll fuck them up pretty bad. There you go. Uh, it is important to note that they do also have health bars associated with each of the sort of death blows, so technically speaking, if you're really fucking bad at blocking and all that to actually get death you blows off, you can kill them, them just by whittling down their health bit by bit. It's just a lot more tedious. Yeah. It is a lot more tedious at this point and, frankly, virtually impossible later on in the game. Now, there he got the most important item in the game, pocket sand. Get pocket sand. The other thing is, he dropped a gourd seed and a uh, prayer bead. Prayer bead. Prayer bead. But only a single prayer bead. You need four to actually do anything. Yeah. Is so this our first kind of really big area? It's actually pretty big and open. It's yeah. still more linear than you think it is, but... It's still it's good at giving... It's pretty good at giving that feel of... Uh... Oh, jump too far. Like, effectively, there's a lot of places to go right now, but there's actually only a couple things to actually do, so... Yeah. It's kind of like, you can go a bunch of different places and not really do much in most of them. No. Yeah. Uh, another thing that's important to note there with the resurrection mechanic, you have quite a while to actually sit there before you hit the actual button. So you can technically use that as sort of a stalling tactic to let so dudes lose interest and go back to being not paying attention to you and effectively regain stealth that way. I 
feel like he's not going to come after you in the little canyon there. Just hit him. Uh, it's not nearly as easy as you think. They will typically block normal attacks. Like, even with general mooks, you usually end up having to either get off a parry counter or just like go into the back and forth play enough to break their posture to really get rid of them. Yeah, you can kind of hammer down like individual mooks, but you don't really want to try and hammer down multiple mooks. Yeah, and even then, individual mooks, even in a one-on-one, -on -one, it's not just you sit there and hammer the attack button. You still have to play a lot of back and forth. Yeah. Because after every two or three swings, they will very definitely get your timing and get a swing in if you try and attack again rather than actually blocking their play. I think that's there. It is. That guy. It's kind of one of those things where, like, you know, in a soul style game, typically, realistically, any enemy is dangerous on some level. You can die to, you know, a regular undead just as much as you can die to a boss if you're not paying attention. In this one, rather than it being by sort of weird funky control mechanics and like that, it is much more determined by the fact that the, the back and forth of actual combat comes into play even with your general grunt mooks. Yeah. Big old fatty crusher guy. Yep, ogre. Just gotta sneak up on him. He dropped a possession blue. Uh, this one is... He's basically uh, item, item, so that chance. increases the chance of getting items. Hmm. That one increases money gains. And you can see how there's kind of stealth points through here. Like, here's a... Yeah, yeah like you can sneak through broken here. walls and stuff like that. Like, again, it is pretty possible and mostly intended to stealth through as much of this game as possible. But again, there are times where stealth is just not yeah, really like, an There option. will be areas where you just, you basically can't stealth. Yeah, they want you to actually use the combat system to some extent. Yeah. Who are guy in the right? Oh, chicken. chicken. Oh, chicken. Death chickens. Yes, giant monster chickens. Do the chicken, I tell you. We're giant chickens. Forgive him, my lord. He's been dead for a while. Nope. He's like, you're my son. I'm like, mm, take this bow. So do you actually tell her the truth that she could be the bell? I don't know. Uh, I th but. think she tells you to like go away, but you can come back and talk to her again anyways. Yeah. And yeah. This is actually her son. But also, here's her son. <laughs> and okay. And he basically explains, like, look, she's been going fucking insane for a yeah, while. Like she's a scene out at this point. Okay. the family, uh, need a favor, can you look on the lady, she's my mother. But she's failing, she can't really tell who anyone is. And, like, and this is because we already talked to her. Yeah. You can talk to Nosuke first, and it basically ends at He tells point. you to go check on his, well, his mother. Yeah, and then you can go talk to her, and then come back, and you basically get the rest of this conversation. Yeah. I want you to offer the bell to Buddha. Offering the bell to the Buddha. Yeah. Eat a Snickers. Yeah. Yes. Where's the guy off camera? Yeah, I kind of saw him as you were building the other guy. Now it's a swing cross. Yeah, 
gonna hit you with a cannon. And we get gunpowder. Uh, also important to note, it hasn't really come up in any sort of necessity as of yet, but it is totally possible to just chain grappling hook swings. Yeah. Which will become a thing in some later areas where there's a lot of just stupid-ass verticality. Oh, you notice you're, you're murdering. Yes, yeah, so they will usually do that. It's also another part of why it's not always possible to 100% stealth through the game, because if you're ever in a situation where you do have to deal with dudes and there's more than one around, it is almost certain that the first one will, that, that the others will notice you murdering the first one. Yeah. And yeah, like you can see, we were standing there and we pulled the money from the dude on top of the stairs. It has a big ass radius on that money suction. Yeah. It can money suck for days. Yeah, there's a lot of doors in this game that you can never open. Yes. The cosmetic doors. They're for show. It's like, we know you can just kind of grab and hook about. We don't need to let you open doors. But then there are doors you can open. Are there doors you can open really, really slow? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> are you invincible while doing them? Yes. Of course. Just like I'm You're invincible a lot of things in this game, actually. You're invincible while doing any of the death blow animations, which can sometimes be really funny when there's two other guys with fucking Tanegashimas firing at you. The bullets quite literally do pass through your character model, but you take no actual damage. It's the ancient shinobi art of cutscene invincibility. Yes. Also, seriously, fuck those chickens. <laughs> Mega Ultra Chicken. Those chickens ain't nothing to fuck with. No, they're legends. Yeah, like the, those chickens will fuck you right up if you let them. Hey, I was just letting you know you can enhance physical attributes by turning in four prayer beads, which will increase your health and uh, posture. Yeah. It's okay, you can't do that. You don't have four prayer beads. So one of the other things we can do right now, though, travel back to the shrine, and go offer that bell to Buddha. Yep, and increase our uh, gourd. Yes, gourd seed thing. Yes, yeah. yes, gourds, gourds, gourds. Swallows of water. Possibly, it's magical healing gourds. I died. Yeah, so then we talk to the sculptor and we're like, hey, this crazy old lady gave us this bell. And the sculptor's like, oh. It's Shinobi, esoteric task. Text. Oh, yeah, we actually got that far enough to yeah. get those off of them. Yeah, so I get skill. So basically, you level up, you get skill points. Ah. Uh, when you die, you don't lose skill points. You basically lose the XP you had up. To Towards the next skill point. Next skill point. Okay. Yeah, so if you've already completed one, you will not lose below the one you've already completed. It's just the, any XP towards the next is halved. Uh, and again, that's something that can be done at any of the uh, Sculptor's Idols. Uh, again, doing that is one of the things at the Sculptor's Idols that does not actually uh, reset enemies. Yeah. So acquire skills and enhance physical attributes and purchase spirit emblems does not actually uh, resurrect enemies. Yeah, so you have multiple. You have a couple skill types too. So you have uh, combat arts, which are actual special attacks. 
Um, they have to be specifically activated. Then you have latent effects and martial arts, which are latent effects are just passives. Yeah. Uh, martial arts are usually activated, but not like a specific attack like this one. Like the we're actually going to save up to get a Makiri counter because it's actually incredibly important. Yeah. Like, we could get this, which gives us World 1 Slash, which is a big World 1 Slash. Um, which is a specific thing you have to actually, like... Yeah, you have to, to, you have to equip do, it as an art, and then you then do... Circle R1 to actually one use one. it, as opposed to a carry counter, which is just a straight up... Yeah. It's uh, the, the moment an enemy thrust perfect. attack would hit you, it's basically a better version of thrust stops than uh, action deflecting. Uh, yeah. It does a huge amount of poise damage, basically lets you... For anything besides a boss, it's basically death blow. For the most part, if they're doing a thrust attack, you get it off. Yeah, uh, it is also important to note there that, like you said, we're saving up for that one because Mercury Counter takes two skill points, not yeah. just one. So it is not a straight one skill point to one skill thing. Different skills have different costs. Yeah. And now offering that bell. Yeah. I tell you what, I do not know what that bell was coded in, but we should not have fucking licked it. <laughs> <laughs> Place the bell. You ready to go on a trip, Wolf? You're gonna be high as a kite. Okay. Just as an update, we have dropped some more frames here and there, but we're not doing Nothing too bad. Really. We're at like two percent okay. for the whole time. So, yeah. So basically, uh, leaving these memories, these bells, and praying to the Buddha, uh, we'll, leave, we'll unlock uh, old memories. Mm. And by unlock old memories, I mean entire areas. Yeah. Entire areas where we go through in our current form. Yes. Yes. And acquire items, which we bring back with us. Like, for instance, this one was three years ago. In a forest? Uh, we come around the cliff real quick and there's a castle. Uh, quite specifically, if we actually paid attention to what the uh, dying guy and his mom were talking about, this is the... Uh, castle that he was a servant or yes, a, this a is uh, Hirata Castle yeah oh. or the Hirata Estate yeah Hirata yeah. Estate and the the dying son was a retainer of the Hirata family yeah again see earlier question about fall damage it's like I think it's technically exists but never actually of any significance because anytime you're falling any decent length there's yeah, like you're the son of. Oh. What happened? Thieves. They attacked. Protect the divine air. What year is it? Well, that's a weird question. And you're like, that was three years ago. This doesn't make any sense. And he dies. Uh, also of important note, it is not entirely clear whether these are actually your memories or not. It never really... Because as the wolf mentions right there, I don't remember any of this. Yeah. He also has member problems anyway. So he does. What happened to him. But it's... Member problems and a really kick-ass katana considering he's like destroying an entire cart with one yep. swing. Uh, they're really shitty carts. He can destroy them by jumping on them. <laughs> this is also true. Don't, don't chalk that up to the quality of the katana. It's the lack of quality on the cards. We found the lowest quality one in Japan. What? Oh, yeah, there's nothing on the bridge. Oil, which for right now doesn't really do much for us. Until we have fire across a custom sword or another. Essentially. So oil is a status effect. Uh, it effectively makes you take more damage from, from fire, fire attacks. We don't currently possess any fire attacks, so while we do technically have jugs of oil we can throw at people, we have no way to exploit once they're actually oiled. Does not mean that enemies will not attempt to oil us. It's terrible. Ah, oh, dogs! Brought their dogs here. 
course there are dogs here. There's always dogs. When you least expect it. Dogs. Thank you to be dead, sir. Thank you to be dead. That's a fish. I don't need to be locking onto that right now. <laughs> Taking all your money. What are you going to do about hey, it, Hey, Hunter. Well, it's a hell of a way to go. Um, so, Sekiro is pretty damn good. Uh, it's very enjoyable. Uh, a lot of the negative reviews or negative feedback I've seen on Sekiro at this point, honestly, is people playing it like they would play a Souls game, and that's part of why they don't like it, because you're not supposed to play it that way. Uh, it is... Much more of a Tenchu game than it is a Souls game, although it does—it definitely has some of the DNA of Souls splattered on it. Uh, I mentioned a little bit earlier that, if I'm being totally honest, the parts that it inherited from Souls are actually the parts I dislike the most. <laughs> uh, Important things that are over here. Swimming mechanics. This guy. Also, yes. It's a creepy guy living in a pot. Perfectly normal. Who previously established that there's a guy, so... Okay, all told under green. At least part of that blame does lie on From Software, who haven't made a non-Soulsborne game in a while. No, they haven't. A uh, good portion of what they've been working on is non-Souls for games because they themselves are sick of them too. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, they were sick of them as of Dark Souls 2. Yes. But kept getting demand for them and so they're like, well, I mean, I suppose we could release a game that's not one of these and not sell any copies because people are pissed at us or we could keep making these. Yeah. But with this one, they were outright like, I mean, they, they've they even said, like, this is not a Dark Souls game. Please do not expect it to be a Dark Souls game. Yeah. Uh, so he will buy, or he can sell stuff to us for uh, legendary guard scales. And so you have Divine Grasp, basically a healing item. He has a different gourd uh, that basically uh, increases our fire resistance, but doesn't put out fire if we already have it. Yeah. Uh, a mass fragment, which does something, assuming it's the other half. And another uh, a combat art, basically. Oh, don't even worry about reviews on this, Hunter. Games journalists have been incapable of referring to any third-person action game as anything but Dark Souls. It's like Dark Souls, but for like five years, so. Yes. <laughs> Hence the title of our stream. And a good portion of the game's journalists couldn't even review Dark Souls games to begin with. Are you sneaking up on a fish? Yes. I'm sneaking up. Oh. Ah. No, no, you're not. He was trying to. The, the jumping is not the, the, the most accurate. Yeah, the, the, the death from above attacks are not reliable. Just because it... You have to sort of have a lock on and have to have it accept that you're aiming at the thing and trigger... Um, yeah, especially you notice that the and uh, it switches around a lot while you're in air. Are especially vulnerable to that. Yeah, there we go. Treasure carp scale. Treasure carp. There's actually two treasure carp in this area. Yeah. So if we can get both of those, we're actually much better off because we can get the gourd. Yeah. Rather than spending one on Edison, which is honestly kind of a fucking waste. It's a healing item. Oh, wrong button. Yeah, like when I said, oh, that's a fish that was locking onto. Mm -hmm. That's what he was talking about. There was one of these under the bridge at the time. Yeah. Uh, they will outright run away from you if they notice you. Yeah. They are not actually aggressive. Now he's too low for me to get. Yeah. Well, you had a fishing rod. Yeah, see, this one way. It's fine. This game does not have fishing in it. It has fish, but not fishing. That's what you define as fishing. Jumping in the water and stabbing a fish is a type of fishing. 
Sword fishing. Not really. the stones of this game. I don't quite have enough power yet, so uh, we will rest though because I'm down a gourd. And it's effectively a new area. Yeah, I'm not really gonna... We're, we're gonna respawn those dudes outside the gate that no, can't come in here anyways. Accurate. Well, didn't mean to rest again, but it doesn't matter. Because there's a door in the way and they can't the open the... <laughs> they, they, they can't open ornamental doors any more than we can. Not super useful in this instance, but when any sort of interiors, that can actually be super useful because you can't really get wide angle shots to see down hallways. And that guy. And that guy. That guy's an archer. Yep. Ow. Oh, he has archer of fire arrows. There's actually two of them down there. Yep. Non-archer guys who want to be down, so don't want to fight him as well. trying to kill him. I'm sad. Cool. I'm done getting my shit pushed in by a peasant. Uh, unfortunately, no poison rice ball in this game. You do get some hilarious other ninja tools, though, such as giant fucking axe. We'll actually get that shortly here. You know, that very notable ninja tool. Got him in the throat. He knows what he did. And, as previously mentioned, the most important ninja tool of all, pocket sand. What's the only thing on this side of the wall? Do you see the color of this guy's coat, Hunter? This has always been a Naruto game. Oh, yeah, those are spirit. Uh, I like all that money you've been leaving around. Uh, there is also technically a sprint button if you feel like using it. Yes, yeah, so you can sprint off your dodge. That's... It, uh. There's no real downside to doing it across open areas because, again, this game doesn't have any sort of stamina meter. Uh, the only downside to sprint as opposed to like the regular sort of running and walking is you will sprint right off of ledges. You, you do not actually stop when you are sprinting. Guys, over in here yet? Well, there's something. Doesn't look like it. Yeah. How is? There we go. <laughs> My friend's dead. Combat maneuvers are an excellent way to de derail GM plans, Hunter. <laughs> he he's able to hang out now because his character died via uh, grapple. Uh, he bull rushed, then grappled an undead beholder, dragging it into lava. <laughs> well, dragging into lava is certainly a permanent solution. Yes, combat maneuvers can frequently have incredibly funny. Uh, 
funny results. Mostly because people so infrequently actually use them that no GM ever really plans for them. I assume that's the on fire status condition? Yes. Yes, that is the burn status. Uh, what system are you actually playing in, Hunter? 3-5, Pathfinder, 5th. Pathfinder? Okay, there are some absolutely hilarious grapple builds you can do in Pathfinder. Same with 3-5, actually. Yes, but Pathfinder actually functions as a system. Yes. More so than 3-5? Yes. I mean, the it's not greatly more functional, but it's more functional. Uh, in general, I want to say if you haven't already looked at it, if you're doing, if you're looking at doing a monk, uh, there is a ACF for monks or an alternate class style for monks called Tetori, I believe, which is the grapple focused one. Has a whole bunch of boost to grapple and stuff like that in place of some other default monk abilities. There's also, of course, just hilariously broken orc barbarian grappler. But if we're being totally honest, I'm assuming you actually like your DM and therefore we will not unleash Thrak upon them. Ah, oh, Thrak, orc barbarian. Grappler extraordinaire. So they can't climb on top of buildings. They can throw stuff, but they, they can't can actually climb like up here. Oil pots at me, but they can't actually climb up here. Yeah. Yes. Thrak, who, as I recall, was only slightly worse at grappling than a giant boa constrictor. Well, that's the giant boa constrictor broken at grappling. Yes. But the fact that you were able to make a character that was only slightly worse at grappling than that I can't is. See you. Camera, please. <laughs> so as you can see, the most the most devious villain from all Souls games continues in the Sekiro. The camera. Yep, of course. Well, obviously, your camera in this game is just one of those chickens with a GoPro attached to its head. <laughs> it's constantly following behind you. Huh, idea for a video game. Yeah, there's also technically a grapple-based fighter ACF, which is terrible. Um, like 90% of ACFs? Mm. Technically, archetype. Archetype, yeah, sorry. I was forgetting what the actual Pathfinder term for is. That's and okay, that's, we call them ACFs anyways all the time. It's just, yeah. they actually are called archetypes. And that's not true. I wouldn't say 90% of Pathfinder archetypes are terrible. They're like 70%. And again, the only reason why archetypes and Pathfinder are actually all that bad is for the same reason that prestige classes are, and that base classes actually work in Pathfinder, unlike 3.5. Uh, yes, but unlike prestige classes, which are also meant to be subpar options, according to the designers of the game, uh, the archetypes are actually meant to be viable? Look, some of them perfectly are, until they realize they made a typo and changed them, so you cannot, in fact, do... Two di those two ACFs together on Gunslinger. And some more Titan Mauler. <laughs> An ACF that actively causes anger. <laughs> Look, t 
Titan Mauler worked perfectly fine until they made a rules update clar- clarifying, no, this doesn't actually do what you think it does. It does fucking nothing. <laughs> that is correct. Until they released the errata and the rules clarification saying, no, no one would ever actually want to take more than one level in Titan Mauler. <laughs> I did get another uh, shinobi weapon there. But we're not going to go back to deal with it until we get a third one up here shortly. Yep, no worries. Ah, Titan Mauler. When initially they released, still wasn't great, but at least seemed interesting and entertaining. And then they were like, no, no matter what it says, you can't actually wield colossal weapons as a medium character, even though that's literally exactly what this whole class is supposed to be about. So on that note I made earlier, you can absolutely lose aggro if you haven't actually actively started fighting them yet. You just can't lose aggro as soon as you actually hit them. Well, well, axe guy, calm down. Calm down. It's just that it doesn't usually appear in much uh, media when it comes to, like, the Air Japan stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's period accurate. Yeah, I assume so. I mean, I assume pretty much every culture had an axe of one sort or another. You asked for it. Hmm. Ah. Ah, so much effort to open these doors. <laughs> She was down on that web. There's the Shinobi, shinobi the Axe of the Monkey. Seriously, we came over here. To open the Shrine of the Silver Monkey? Yes. It's actually a Black Iron Monkey. The Shrine of the Shinobi Monkey. Olmec, what is our legend for today? Uh, this legend is about a samurai that killed a demon chicken. <laughs> Can you at least try, old Mac? I swear it happened. It's the most dangerous estates that there is. It's full of demon chickens. Luckily, chickens are stupid. Yeah, these ones aren't stupid. They're just assholes. Dun, 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 oh, dun, dun, chicken dun, 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 speaks dun. to me. I'll call it Nugget. Chicken. So those chickens are easy enough to take down once they don't, if, as long as you can take them out before they really get started. Once they actually start attacking, they generally don't stop. They are annoying as shit in that regard. And here... Yeah, I don't know. At least this door is justifiable. <laughs> there we go. Not... Dead wooden flimsy doors on a shrine. A little rest. Got our stuff back. We'll travel because we have new prosthetics to mess around with.
probably also. Yep, we have enough to get McKitty counter. We can also take and get the follow up to that. Uh, run the slides different art, but yeah. Uh, let's want to slide into a craft traditional sprinting. Mm. Uh, we are also now should be a getting. Uh, undead man will now let us train Makiri Kamara. Yep. Nice. I have no idea. We don't want you to see, or see shit. That's how it works. So we now have the loaded axe and the flame up. And then he gives us the prosthetic esoteric text. Something. Uh, well, first, load X. Play map. It's on the set of skills. Ah, yep. So this has the chasing slice, which basically you can throw a uh, shuriken. Also, uh, some of these only work with particular weapons, like for instance, this one yeah. only works with the shuriken and two other things. Yeah. But we haven't got those tools yet, so it doesn't show us. Uh, basically, let's just throw a uh, shrink and then immediately follow a slash. Yeah. Okay, so that's how you do that stuff. Yeah. Uh, swing grappling hook, which is swing on a grappling hook and then attack. Mm. I'll get this, because why not? It'll be fun. Yeah, like that's the axe axe one. Yeah. And this one lets you use tools a bit there. Uh, it's worth noting that ranged attacks uh, do a bunch of poise damage to aerial enemies. Mm. Yeah. Uh, this applies to you as well. Ah. So if you get hit with aerial attacks, it does quite a bit. So we're going to just aggro this guy straight out. Come on. No, no, he's signaling everyone so they can fire at you. <laughs> Eventually. Now we also have fun weapon, other weapons like this axe. It's a pretty short range, actually. Yeah, it's incredibly short range, but hits really fucking hard. So principal. Previous evidence has proved that statement false. I'm gonna rest to get my <laughs> <laughs> everything back. <laughs> he has all those resources. For, pretend no one saw that. guys. Yeah, I was yep. wondering we were just stuffing past uh, the section you've already done anyways. Oh, and the other tool we have, which I'll use on these guys, because why not? Now target the guy right underneath me, please.
I see you can totally just grind up experience because. Yeah. Get skills. I mean, you get skills. Skills yeah. are quite useful. Yeah. Like, especially powering through a lot of the base stuff to get a lot of the passives. A lot of the passives are actually really powerful. So this is actually a particular point. Uh, you actually have two paths to go from this way. Mm. You can go up the main path or you can actually go through that side path. Oh. They will eventually end up at the same place, but they are different paths to take. Since this is about as far as I've gotten, I'll let you guys choose. Do you want to go up the main path or do you want to do the uh, side path through the bamboo? Uh, side bamboo path. Yeah. Okay. So one of the two paths has a Shinobi Hunter in it. Well, if he's good at his job, he'll be in the Bamboo Forest path. <laughs> Domon, Ninja Slayer. You're a lone wolf. I am Ninja Slayer. I'll give you one guess which path he's in. <laughs> what I figured. Well, it's a side path. Nothing can go wrong. I'll just sneak by everybody. Oh, this isn't a full path. I know there's a point where the path basically splits. This might, this may not be it though. Yeah, don't look like we can go down that way. No. It's an incredibly dense bamboo forest. Most bamboo forests are actually pretty dense. Yeah, yeah. that's fair enough. Hypothetically, you should actually be able to push his way through that from quite a little bit, yeah. So this is actually one of the acts. Yeah, because I've got the shields. Yeah. Come on, buddy. So we, uh, the 
axe but axe otherwise. <laughs> basically. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the axe basically shatters their shields. Yeah. And does a shit ton of poise damage, apparently, when you shatter a shield. Oh, it does a ton of posture damage. That's most of the point of the axe. So does it just do a ton of poise damage in general, or, or posture damage? Yep. No matter who you hit it with, it does a ton of posture okay. damage. Okay, yeah. For a few people they, who they, shrug they, off all oh, an axe. Yeah, basically. Nobody likes it when you ask them a question. Uh, now, mind you, it's still not terribly recommendable to use against most bosses because it still takes about an hour and a half to actually swing. But yeah, so here's the side bath. Uh, also a good note, uh, they will actually alert to dead bodies. They won't go into full red mode, but they will definitely go yellow off of seeing a dead body. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, the archer in that place is up Apparently. I was taking a shit. Oh. And that guy. Can't hurt me. Ah, ninja etiquette. Sounds like a little bad. It's... You banned the ninja? Nope, not allowed. Just like pirates and assassins. Ninjas are not thieves. Except when they are. That's right, they're wolves. Everything's fine. Well, you haven't died. Everything is awesome. And then I saw it. The double-decker katana. The dumbest <laughs> idea I've ever seen. He was actually about to. Yeah, but they, they will pull out. Uh, oh, okay. Swords. You just have to get real close to the archers before they actually will pull a sword. That uh, oh, as long as there's no sharp of demon, let's fuck back up. He's that ancient technique of stabbing me in the gut. Yep, yep. Death blows. There are technically geckos in the very first area if you go all the way down to the bottom of the uh, area under the bridge. Yes, that area you have no reason to go to. Unseen aid. 
So we lost nothing. Yep. Uh, of important note, I also believe it is not possible for Unseen Aid to trigger as well as Dragon Rot. So I think if you get Unseen Aid, you also will not get Dragon Rot on NPCs. Ah. The Bentley makes the death not count. Effectively. Essentially. I just didn't want to do that though. You have to make a dramatic entrance. You have to announce yourself. Oh, yes. Well alone. I've returned. I've chosen not to death below Shiv. It's very kind of you. A dramatic effect. Sure, could use an oil tanker's full of oil to spill on top of it. Okay, yeah. Or maybe some nuclear waste. Or maybe some radioactive oil. <laughs> Are we trying for gamma rock? Go away so I can ninja you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be surprised if you just can't sneak up on it. Everyone can be stuck up on it. No one is immune to ninja. Yeah, just had one life. Uh huh. He just really kicked your ass. He did just really kick my. He has a friend. Oh, that was the apprentice. I was very intimidated. Next time you should hit him. And not get stabbed. There we go. Yeah, yeah, I got poked anyways. <laughs> Missed the timing on it. So, why did you get up while he was standing right next to you, not trying to wait until he was at his back turn? So, I'll wait five minutes for him to walk away. <laughs> yeah, these guys actually shouldn't be this hard if I remember I have Mercury Counter. Hmm. Very muscly, they just poke. Mm hmm. Yeah. 
you remember to be a stepping wolf. I don't think that's much nicer in this in regards to compared to like Souls like games is because of all the mobility options with the grappling hook and everything and the focus on stealth it is less annoying when you die to get back to where you were because you can just kind of pretty easily skip all the enemies yes for the most part Ninja, fuck you! <laughs> Darn, we can't cross running water. Isn't that vampires and not peasants? No, I'm pretty sure that's peasants. We would smell better if we could cross running water. That is true. One semi-dangerous thing about the Mercury counter is uh, it's basically a deflect move, but it's not on the deflect button. Ah. So you got to be really committed to wanting to get it off. Yep, because if you miss the timing, you just get hit. You don't get a non-perfect parry. Yeah, because it's actually attached to dodge. <laughs> about getting bamboo in your yard. A, stop. B, it's a type of grass, so you're not really going to save anything on water. And C, it is also a pain in the ass when it comes to trimming and maintaining because it's that big or bigger. Never trim and maintain. That's not a terrible option. That's right. You should exclusively uh, exclusively cultivate your front yard with pick my palm trees. Uh. Palm trees and palm trees. Palmception. And that one terrible plant from Australia that is basically like glass knives in your soul. <laughs> palm uh, trees, the, palm the gumpy trees. gumpy? Gimpy yes. gimpy. Gimpy gimpy, yeah. Palm trees and gimpy gimpy in your front yard. Yeah, that guy's looking I'm good. fairly That's certain it's a legal plant to gimpy gimpy. Like at all. Well, you're already an asshole if you're thinking of doing this, so you, you really don't care about the law at this point. for that perfect timing. No. no. And then they killed the dog. <laughs> to kill the dog. Say long loads for probably the first Dragon Rod instance. Yep. Mm. Yep. So other than having Dragon Rod, is there any consequence to this? It lessens the percentage of Unseen aid. Okay, uh, less that. than three percent of unseen aid, and people who have dragon rot won't do certain dialogue. So, like, there's people who have sub quests or side quests you can't do if they're dragon rotted. Ah, because you can't talk to them about to start the side quest or progress the side quest. Yeah, 
generally it's recommended with the Dragon Lot remo removal items to basically use them after every like main boss kill. Mm. To yeah, clear that Dragon Lot there is, then talk to people for new side quests and so on and so forth. So the sculptor's now sick. Raw essence sculptor. As is the timid maid. And the timid maid. So for instance, uh, I now have a 13% uh, unseen aid. Ah. So are we getting your unseen aid above 30%? I don't know. think so. I think as you progress further and further and get access to more and more NPCs, it will increase, but... Nah. It never goes super high, I don't think. It's never actually intended to be a major mechanic you rely upon as like, oh, I can die and not have any consequences. Yeah. Cause In consequences as they stand are probably that big. No. Because it's half experience and half what else? Money. money. The money is a little bit annoying, but at the same time, it's just encouraging you to actually spend it. Uh, the, spend it really. Uh, also, strictly speaking, if you're super worried about that, once you actually gain access to the first like real store, you can technically convert at a very slight loss all of your money into the coin pouches. Yes. Mm. Uh, so coin pouches cost a hundred and ten, but sell for a hundred, but you do not lose them upon death. Yeah, so it's basically a way of banking your money if you're worried about it. At a basically 10% loss rate. <laughs> Which is not awful. Too. No. So if you're actually saving up for something. Or what yeah, effectively, work? if you're actually trying to save up for something, just every time you hit the shop, you buy it, you pump, pump as much of your money as you can into coin purses, and then when you actually have enough saved up to do it, you sell off all the coin purses and just buy the thing you, you need. And some of the experience or skills just doesn't seem like a big deal either. No. Uh, at the start, not so much. Eventually, it kind of becomes a pain in the ass because it does become take more and more experience to get skill points. He doesn't know, yeah. He... Yeah, yeah, that's the actual Shinobi Hunter. Oh, that is the actual Shinobi Hunter. Yep. Oh, yeah. Wait, he's on the main path. Uh-huh. That was the other way. Yeah. It'd be great if I could find him without having a freaking arch to deal with. Just another day in the life of a Shinobi hunter. Mm. Oh, hey, you died by the side of the road. A true Shinobi <laughs> death. Exactly. Hey, hey, live the dream. <laughs> and this is the prequel to Seven Cocker. We had the Shinobi are turning into tempura shrimp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got bad peripheral fishing. What's a trade of
So yeah, they basically told me I couldn't see to the left or to the right. Then the bandit union called me. The bandit union, local 137. As in, there are 137 of us bandits. We demand fair wages for bandits, which is all of your wages. It doesn't help the back, it also changes the bolts were, but then again, I can never get L2. Yeah. 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 I don't know what any fucking buttons sure. are, so. Uh, yeah. Spirit attack. All the buttons. I mean, That's I got a stealth attack off on the Shinobi Hunter and got one of his bars gone, sure. so. Sure. Same idea. <laughs> Running through the side path. Climb the wall. Climb the wall. It's a minor thing that bugs me, but I do kind of wish you did a longer movement with the sword actually sheathed. Yeah. Then just have no need for sheath swords. The best sheath for a sword is the flesh. Okay, right literally right. not. <laughs> I mean, it's not like he practices fucking EI Jitsu. It's true. No, it's just all the parkour he's doing. It's not like the sword is used in it either. So he's basically doing it with a sword fully in one hand. Ninja. Do you note the axe sticking out of my other arm? <laughs> yeah, he literally has a grappling hook attached to the other arm. Like, what the fuck do you expect? So there's a tree on the other side you can grapple to. 
not. So there it is. And if you grapple to that, you can get pretty close to the other archer, take him out, and then immediately hop into that field. If you do it quick enough, you can get there without the uh, shinobi hunter actually noticing you. Those guys are somewhat ignorable. He is not as much. That's the archer. Yeah, like what I did was I jumped down, took out the archer, and immediately ducked into the bushes behind him. And that enabled me to sneak around on the actual shinobi hunter. And Yeah, but uh... Not Ooh. sure why you're going back to the insignificant guy, oh. but... Yeah, because you moved back towards the guy who didn't matter. Ninja! Ninja or the pilot are really high up the fox. I wish it wasn't so finicky about the... Yeah, it seems yeah. like it's really hit or miss as to whether you air death blow. Actually wants to go off or not. It'd be better if, like, you just got the death blow when you were looking at somebody from above, and then hitting the death blow button automatically did the death blow. Ninja <laughs> Hunter running on top of the building again. I'm dead. Just, just straight dead. Leave me alone. I'll go away. <laughs> Do you see that? I just totally just poked him. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. That was a grab. Yep. That apparently counts as a grab. Yep. Oh. Oh, organs. The grabby stab thing. <laughs> he grabbed your organs. Did in fact At the tip of his spear. my organs. Coming back from Dark Souls 2. My guts. <laughs> We're going to thrust in a slightly different way. This counts as a grab. Uh-huh. I was ready for that one too, and then it wasn't a staff. Uh, I might want to take like one more try at this and one yeah. other call it there. Yep. Yeah. Alright, this one's for all the marbles that are actually smoke bombs. Or grenades. This one's for all the grenades. <laughs> That's very confused. I was never going to get over that. Just what what just happened there? I go investigate this. This is very surprising. Shield guys.
I have a new plan. A bold plan. A plan to pretend to be a better ninja. You're just going to sneak around the world of your first to begin with. Yes. Where is that archer? A little bit further up. Didn't see me. Yellow. Yep. All that matters. Thank you all for joining us again. Yep. Uh, so we'll be back on Sunday. Uh, probably with Super Robot Wars T, actually. Um, we might also do a bonus stream on Thursday, since I believe our friend HP is actually going to be at PAX East, so we're not going to be doing our normal Minecraft thing. Uh, we'll see how that works out. We'll talk about that and figure out what's going on. Uh, but we'll definitely be back on Sunday around 2 p.m. ish doing something. Like I said, most likely Super Robot Wars T. Um, and then we'll be back again uh, on uh, next Tuesday around 7 p.m. Pacific uh, with Sakura Wars So Long My Love. Despite my best interest of not hating myself. Uh, so please join us for that. And uh, we hope you all have a good evening. Bye, everyone. Yep. Bye.